Hello and welcome back to World360. In the age of social media, we all know how three issues, trolling, freedom of speech and censorship, have become popular topics of discussion. But in one country, the topic of legal action has also entered this broader discussion. Earlier this week, the Parliament of Japan passed a law making online insults punishable by imprisonment. This is the first time that changes have been made for this type of punishment since Japan's penal code was enacted in 1907. Now, under the law, offenders found guilty of cyberbullying can be jailed for up to one year or fined 300,000 yen, which is approximately $2,200. This is a step up from the existing law that calls for detention for fewer than 30 days and a fine of up to 10,000 yen, which is about 75 US dollars. Now, the law has been given a three-year sunset clause, which basically means that it will have an expiration date, after which Parliament will have a chance to decide on the law's merits again. Now, online insults are not defamation. It's important to make this distinction. Under Japan's penal code, insults are defined as publicly demeaning someone's social standing. Defamation, meanwhile, means to publicly demean someone and cause them damages, such as lost earnings, etc. In fact, the recently televised court case between American actors Amber Heard and Johnny Depp is an example of a defamation suit. In countries like the US, most states treat defamation not as a crime, but as a tort, meaning a civil wrong rather than a criminal wrong. And these usually entail fines. There are some US states where it can be treated as a crime, but in most others, criminal defamation laws have either been repealed or struck down as unconstitutional. In countries like India, however, defamation is both a criminal and a civil offence. But remember, it's still defamation we're talking about, not online insults or cyberbullying as such. Most countries have put the onus on platforms themselves when it comes to online speech. In the case of Japan, when the recent bill was proposed, the main opposition, which is the Constitutional Democratic Party of Japan and other parties, also raised concerns that it could stifle legitimate criticism of politicians and public officials. There have also been concerns that such a law is, in a way, playing with fire when it comes to free speech. More so, how does one determine what is an insult and what is not an insult? Saiho Cho, a Japan-based criminal lawyer, told CNN that the revised law gave no classification of what constitutes an insult. Now, let's look at the context in which this law was brought forth in Japan. In 2020, 22-year-old Hana Kimura, a reality TV star and professional wrestler, revealed that she had been receiving a lot of online abuse and hurtful comments. In a final post on Instagram, she shared a picture of herself and her cat with the words, I love you, have a long, happy life, I'm sorry. Though the cause of death was never made official, it's widely believed that Kimura committed suicide. The incident sparked an online debate about cyberbullying in Japan, with growing calls for the implementation of more stringent measures. Kimura took her life on 23rd May 2020, so the second anniversary of her death recently passed by. The issue clearly struck a chord with the political dispensation in Japan. People must understand where the line between constructive criticism and abuse lies, Junko Mihara, a member of the Liberal Democratic Party, told Reuters shortly after Kimura's death in 2020. According to a report in Tokyo Weekender, cyberbullying in Japan has been rising exponentially since 2001. In 2001, there were about 2,267 complaints to the police concerning cyberbullying. In 2016, this number was about 8,000. And the latest data from 2017 stands at about 11,000 cases. So, as a report also by British news website, The Register points out, other countries like Australia recently floated a bill that would allow those defamed online to compel material to be taken down. But since that bill wasn't passed before the recent election in Australia, it's unclear how it will be taken forward. Thank you so much for watching. This is Pia Kushankuti for The Print. Do subscribe to The Print.in and follow us on social media.